In the last few videos, we've looked at parsed trees, for example, constituency trees, and extracted information from those trees, such as I like pizza entities, and then a relationship that joins the entities. If we have enough of these, we can eventually build a system that can take those disparate facts about the world and computes new knowledge from that. These have traditionally been called question answering systems. And in, on week six, we looked at a kind of question answering system that used a BERT and where you gave it as input the question and then it told you the index of the text where you have the answer. These systems work with a different principle. There is a, a subfamily of artificial intelligence called symbolic reasoning. So you're familiar with deep learning. We studied some of it in week six, which believes that artificial intelligence is um, meant to be trying to find the nonlinear functions that connect an input with an output. Makes it very effective, very difficult to interpret. There's another family of artificial intelligence called symbolic reasoning, which believes that artificial intelligence would essentially be the manipulation of symbols to generate new knowledge. For example, we saw this one in the last video. If we know that Leaf is a vegetarian restaurant, we can turn the symbol leaf into X and then uh, infer new knowledge about leaf, such that it serves vegetarian food, for example. This type of reasoning was the dominant paradigm in artificial intelligence until the late 80s. And people designed what were called expert systems, which were supposed to extract the knowledge of a human expert about a field, for example, some disease, and then encapsulated into a series of many rules so that the computer could uh, ask you some questions, you provide the answers, and then it would provide an expert diagnosis of the disease. There's several issues with this. So in week one and two, we looked at rules. And as we know, creating a system with rules is makes for a system that is highly, uh, that is very easy, where it's very easy to explain what it's doing, but where it's very difficult to design the rules because there's no guarantee that you'll ever see the end to the rules. There could be hundreds, thousands, millions. On the other hand, um, artificial intelligence, um, sorry, deep learning superseded it, uh, symbolic reasoning, because it is very effective at finding solutions. But we've had to deal with the black box problem where the solutions that a neural network finds are increasingly more complex to analyze. So there's people working now on trying to merge these two fields back together where we could have symbolic reasoning do some things and deep learning do others to have more intelligent systems. Um, there are systems that have huge knowledge bases, again, built, for example, from parsing data about the world. And if you add an inference engine to it so that you can manipulate the symbols and figure out uh, from incomplete relationships, new knowledge. If you do that, you would have a question answering system. And these are two examples of such systems. For example, Watson from IBM and Wolfram Alpha. As you can see, both of them start with reading some question and doing some kind of linguistic understanding. This is going to be the last topic of this week. And from that linguistic understanding, they derive either a symbolic representation which is built, for example, with the kinds of graphs that we saw before, or um, try, to try to find answers that are good matches to the question based on some knowledge about the world that is stored in, for example, a database or a knowledge base. Both of these systems try to provide answers from analyzing the symbols in the text and analyzing them analyzing them against the knowledge base that they have. It's just you pause the video, go to Wolfram Alpha and give it a try. Try to ask something and see how it goes. I tried a couple things. Um, for example, which current countries were ruled by the Roman Empire? And as you can see, the computer correctly analyzes, not the computer, Wolfram Alpha correctly analyzes the the question and gives you not only an answer in text, but even an answer as a map. I tried to ask it, what was the weight of a pizza on the moon? And it failed. Uh, you give it a try and see how it goes. 
But as you can see, this system is essentially uh, taking your question, trying to understand what are the entities in the question, for example, Roman Empire, current countries, and then comparing that with some internal symbolic representation for, um, for example, uh, some territory was ruled by Roman Empire. And it got this because previously it explored some uh, chunk of texts that had this information. A second example of a big uh, knowledge base is the Google Knowledge Graph. You will play around with it in one of your exercises. So for example, the API lets you access attributes such as person, uh, person little nas x, description American rapper, and this same thing that you can get from the API is what Google displays for you in the little sidebars to your searches. As you can see, these are Montero Lamar Hill known as are the exact same things that you would pull from the knowledge API. And this is built mostly by analyzing Wikipedia text. So that's why many of the answers point to Wikipedia. So it tries to go through the text and extract entities like the proper name, then tries to see what is the best description for that proper name and so forth. And stores it in a structure that has entities such as person and then a series of attributes about the person. A very famous example of a kind of question answering system is IBM's Watson, which is amazing in what it does, but it, it's taken a long time for it to learn it. And because IBM uses a system, tries to use the system in like amazing public displays, trying to be chess champions and goal champions and Jeopardy, we have this beautiful error that it made once where you have a city in the US and the, and the answer from Jeopardy is its largest airport is named for a World War II hero, its second largest for a World War II battle. And the answer is, what is Toronto? Question, question, question. <laughs> the designers, this is from tw uh, 2011, if I remember correctly. And the designers who made it pointed out that first of all, Watson was not very sure. And that's why it has all those question marks. But the facts that it used to derive the answer were probably that there was some that there is an airport in Toronto, the Pearson Airport, that Lester Pearson was a soldier in some war, and that uh, Bishop was a soldier in two wars. Yes. So uh, that there were facts that related Toronto to the question, even though the main thing was US City. So over time, of course, the next time Watson went on Jeopardy, they made a whole big joke about it. And of course, IBM Watson won because it's compiled billions of facts about the world and it has a very efficient um, inference engine behind it. There are things that are never going to be in the text. No matter how much text you throw at Watson or at Wolfram Alpha or at any of these systems, there are things that humans just don't write because they're so obvious. And we call these common sense. For example, that a lemon is sour or that pizzas are commonly found on a plate and not on the floor or on a tree. And evidently that Toronto is a type of something in Canada. So there's, there are things that might be so obvious that they're not going to be in our input data, no matter how much data we go through. So people have created crowdsourced databases for precisely this kind of uh, situation. ConceptNet is one of them. You can go there and play around with it. Uh, as you can see, it's a kind of knowledge graph, which has information like Toronto is a type of city. It's a type of city in Canada. I gave it a try. And pizza, for example, is indeed a food, is a main course, it's a good food, and you can usually find pizzas in the oven. Now I wanted to try this. I gave it a try with Spanish, with pizza in Spanish, and the truth is it knew a lot less than it knew for pizza in English. Why don't you pause the video, go to ConceptNet, and give it a try, not just in English, but in a different language and then we'll see how it went. Please pause the video and go there. Welcome back. 
All right. Well, uh, I'll be sure to have a question about it in our canvas to see. I'm sorry, in our piazza to see how the experiment went. Finally, maybe these two types of processing can work together to provide better, um, you know, better computer systems. If we have a question, if we have a picture like this, and then we have the question: How many? cubes that are behind the cylinder are large, this is something that a neural network is not going to be able to learn. Who knows how many pictures it would need to look for it to learn something as like that. And uh, this is a talk from IBM. I left you the link below. Maybe a neural network cannot learn it, but maybe a neural network and uh, an inference engine could answer this question together. You could take an image and run it through a convolutional neural network, for example, to try to find that the image is composed of a small cube of metal and it's purple, and this is its position, that it is composed of a large cube of metal that is green, and this is its position. So with a neural network, you can transform one of the inputs into some other representation, like a list of entities and their properties. You can use a neural network to transform this question into a series of, ru of logical rules of uh, entities and the relationships, for example. Um, for example, filter for shape that is seen and cylinder. And you can use these instructions to then filter these, this group of entities to try to see how many large entities have all of these properties. And the system correctly answers that there's three of them. So these two approaches can be combined to improve the systems that we have, um, symbolic reasoning and deep learning. And just a quick thing. So these systems take raw data, which are, are terabytes of text, turn it into information, which is, for example, all these disparate facts about the world. And we can use an inference engine to use that information into knowledge. For example, knowledge about the world, about how many cylinders are behind a little square. Knowledge about um, Toronto, derived from a question about Toronto. I'm sorry, about Chicago, derived from a question. Um, but you can see as we go from raw data to information to knowledge, these systems can handle it. We still need humans for uh, to help us with the system for the wisdom part to figure out what the ethical considerations are about using these systems. For example, if, if we are extracting our data from in data from text in the in, on the internet, it's obviously gonna be biased in many ways. So we need to keep this in mind. We need humans to help with the goals derived from this knowledge. What am I supposed to do with the information that you know there's climate change, with the information that there's biases in these systems? We still need humans, but as uh, with dumb on the title, but as you can see, uh, we do have systems that can transform data into knowledge. In summary, um, you reasoning using variables and inferences is called symbolic reasoning, and it's an important part, an important subfamily of artificial intelligence, next to things like deep learning. There are many systems that combine knowledge bases with entities and relationships between them, or with entities and attributes, knowledge bases, and inference engines to combine all of these into new, into new knowledge. We call these question answering systems. And there's many large commercial ones, such as Watson and Wolfram Alpha. Um, there is, even though they're very large and very good, there's a lot of information about the world that they will never know because it's not in the input text. It's not in what they can read from the internet. So people have created crowdsourced common sense databases or common sense collections of knowledge so that um, existing inference engines can also benefit from these. And it is possible to combine symbolic reasoning with deep learning to create even more powerful question answering systems.